just to get back to um, the ergonomics, um, when I've had um, students, when I have students, and I had one today um, and yesterday, and every day there's been at least one who presses down quite hard, and you soon notice, you can hear the sound anyway, and then you, you put your hand underneath, and it's absolutely rock solid. Sometimes it doesn't look as rock solid as when you touch it and the hand can't move. And so we want to have this light feeling. Obviously, when we play the piano, I always feel as though we should um, feel as though we're, our hands are just floating like seaweed in water. And it's really our, I mean, I'm not telling you anything new. I'm just sharing my thoughts with you. And that it's our finger pads that really make, produce the sound. And by the way, our finger pads and the weight touches the key, of course, that's how the hammer hits the string and then causes either a beautiful ringing sound or a harsh metallic sound or a very legato sound or a staccato sound. And so with children, though, you can't talk in the same terms, maybe as an adult, but I'm into lots of pictures, pictorial images and, um, and things that they can see and feel. And so you all know what these are there. Water wings. That's right. It's water wings. I haven't blown this one up. But you can imagine <laughs> if I did blow it up, that, um, and you put it up here, that immediately you put it on, it just has this feeling of playing. Now, especially for young children, when they um, have, if they've experienced water wings, they've all experienced, I think, some, something around their tummy to help them to float. And then it just gets that feeling of floating. So when I actually thought, um, came, um, thought about this, it says for use on upper arms only. Obviously not on your upper leg. And um, when I thought about this idea of floating arms, I went down to my local sea shop or diving shop or you know bathing shop and I said, um, do you have any water wings? We call them floaties. Do you have any floaties? And he said, yes. I said, do you sell them singly or in pairs? He said, no, no, they come you know, in pairs. He said, no. Do you want them for um, salt water or chlorine water? And I said, well, actually neither. I want them for playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> and he just um, looked at me and said, in his best Australian accent, my daughter plays the piano. She doesn't wear those. <laughs> I said, no, I'm, I'm sure she doesn't. Um, I'm just, just doing some experiments, actually. I'm just working some things out. So, uh, and it's been very, very helpful indeed, mm -hmm. just with young people to, to get away from this feeling. Now, other ways of getting away from this, um, you know, pressing down, I get them to play on my hand, exactly like they're playing on the piano. Um, I put my hand across the piano and I say, now you play on me exactly what you've just done on the piano. Just pretend you're playing the piano. And as soon as they start pressing you, I just go, ow! Say, you're making bruises on my hand. Now you're bruising my piano. You know, I've got a money box over here. It's for bruising pianos. <laughs> this is my special money box. And if my piano gets bruised, you know, money has to go into my, my box. It might be your pocket money. So you're not allowed to bruise my, my piano keys. And then I can play on their hand. And I do what they've done on my, what they've done on my hand, I do on their hand. And then rub it very quickly uh -huh, and say and then and that really really does help it's just another way um, and another way is um, I put the lid of the piano down and uh, if you have the lid down and they press you actually don't hear anything so what I try to get them but not see that's quite different from just letting your finger drop really easily and just having this lovely floating, but just to hear the finger pad making contact. But once it starts pressing, there's no noise. So that's just a, a and then to translate that back onto the key straight away. But it's very interesting. I've had um, you know, a couple of, mostly boys, a couple of boys that I can really remember. Um, who've not been able to translate that back onto the key. The minute they touch the key, it's that, it must be that um, ingrained habit or feeling that they think that when you have to depress something, 
you've actually got to press it, that it doesn't just go by itself. So it's been quite a, an interesting journey to work out um, ways and solutions because I feel that there's no point in someone playing, learning pieces and just keeping on playing if they're pressing because they're doing so much damage to here and they're never going to get freedom here because they're just so all of this stems from uh, for me from ergonomics from being able to do something well and not keeping on doing something badly um, and um, there are times when I've had a student who um, really could not just let gravity take its course and um, and I try to do you know this sort of thing where you try to see if the hand can really be loose and I think relax on the piano is certainly a word I wouldn't use but at least to be free and um, there's a student I've had this week as soon as I went to lecture she went like this and <laughs> there was no you know like <laughs> and uh, and when I'd say just just see if you can follow what I'm doing copy what I'm doing and she'd already be like this and the hand very tense all over beautiful child beautiful child absolutely beautiful but just like this and not able to even not even able to you know just mm -hmm. to swing really easily so we were standing up and doing that and um, at home when I've had a student like that a whole lesson has just been lying on the ground and literally just being able to feel because I just don't think you can play if I, and when I feel as though I'm not doing my job if I allow someone to actually play just to learn notes. So um, the, what I've termed my, um, the way that I work is rather holistic way of teaching and not teaching the piano, but helping someone else to learn.